Okay, so sometimes using the general form may not necessarily be the easiest way to graph things. Let me show you why. Because if we're going to use that x-intercept, y-intercept method, check this out. If I look at the x-intercept here, I know that my y equals to zero, which means this guy would be gone, which would leave me with 20, or I should say 2x plus 25 equals to zero. Bring the 25 over. That would give you minus 25. Divide by 2, divide by 2. X equals to, yeah, minus 12.5. Yuck. So you're going to, right away, you're off this graph, number one. Okay, you're off the minus 12 here, way the heck down here. You're off that graph. But the other thing is, is you've got a decimal, which now your accuracy goes way out the window. So what do you do in a situation like this? Well, in a situation like this, simple. Convert it back into y equals mx plus b, which is really, really too easy. Now, let me show you the easy way to do this. Number one, always look at the y value. If it's negative, bring it over to this side, make it positive. If it's positive, leave it where it is and bring the other guys over, okay? So I'll clarify that on the next question for sure. So check this out. I'm gonna bring this guy over because it's negative. So just add five y to both sides. I'm adding five y to both sides. That cancels this out, giving me two x plus 25 equals to 5y. And check this out now. All I got to do is divide by 5 both sides, right? Canceling this out, leaving me with, yep, y equals 2. 2 divided by 5 is 2 fifths x. 25 divided by 5 is 5. And look how much easier this is to graph. My y-intercept is 5. My rise of 2, 1, 2. My run of 5, one, two, three, four, five, and I got a beautiful line that looks like this with no need to know any kind of decimals or anything off the grid out here or anything like that. It's just sometimes going back and using the old slope y-intercept works a heck of a lot nicer than general form. I'm going to leave this up to you to verify this and put this in your calculator. I want to go on to the next question and keep these podcasts kind of short. Look at this one. Same kind of idea. You know you're going to have to divide by 6. And look, 6 doesn't go into 15. 2 doesn't go into 15. You're going to get ugly decimals. So that's one of the reasons why we're going to convert this right back into y equals mx plus b format. But if you look, haha, now your y is positive. Leave it as positive. Get rid of this guy. Minus the 6x from both sides, okay? That cancels, leaving you 2y minus 15 equals to minus 6x. Then add the 15 to both sides. Add the 15 to both sides. That cancels this guy out, right? Leaving you a 2y equals to minus 6x plus 15, all right? Then divide by 2, divide by 2, and look what you're going to get. You're going to get a very, very nice-looking equation. That cancels, leaving you y equals 2. So see how the y is positive now? 6 divided by 2 is minus 3x. 15 divided by 2, yeah, it's going to be a little bit ugly, but I think you can work with that. That gives you 7.5, all right? Okay, so let's graph this one. Easy peasy. Let's bring up our graph right over there, okay? There it is, 7.5. Looks like it's very, very close right there. This means, of course, down 3 over 1. So check this out. I'm going 1, 2. I'm all going by half. See? 1 complete half. 1, 2, down 3, right into the middle there. So I'm at 4 and a half, right? And I'm moving over 1. Look at that. There's my new graph. Sure, I can just go down by halves. Either way, it works out to be a much, much nicer way than doing all the crazy decimals that I would have had before.